So it's double, remember, per individual per month for a total Medicare cost per month of $349.40 for Part B. If you're using if you're using Part D, that's $33.30. Addition for so your total surcharge here would be $208 in that bracket. So once you cross over $161,000 I'm moving this around, so I'm hoping you can see it a little clearer. Once you cross over $161,000 um, for a single filer to $322,000 for a married filing joint filer, where well now your surcharge is $279.50. Your total Part B premium is $454.20 per month per individual. And it goes on. So then you get a surcharge beyond $193,000 for a, a single filer and beyond $386,000 for uh, a married filing joint filer. You're at $384 and 30 cents surcharge for a total Medicare Part B premium of $559 a month. So you see everybody starts at $174.70 and it can be as high as $559 up to $750,000 of a of modified adjusted gross income for a married filer and five hundred thousand five hundred thousand dollars and modified adjusted gross income for a, a single filer. I, I think I might have just reversed that. So seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for modified adjusted gross income for a married filing joint filer and five hundred thousand dollars and modified adjusted gross income for a single filer. So five hundred and fifty nine dollars extra I'm sorry, $559 is significant for sure. And if you don't think that that could have a negative impact on your retirement plan, I think you should do some uh, checking and planning. And then it gets a little worse. So $500,000 and above or $750,000 and above for a married couple and modified adjusted gross income, your surcharge is $419 for a total of nearly $600 a month for your uh, Medicare. And I just have to remind you, if you're married, that's times two, and that is per month. Um, and these are the surcharge amounts. So this is this is a big deal, folks. This is really easy to slip to slip into. So at least once a year, I have folks who say, you know, I've watched, I, I attended your class, or I've watched videos, or I've, I've I read a book, or whatever, and I, I'm really into this tax efficient planning. And I did Roth conversions last year, and I converted a million dollars out of my IRA into my Roth IRA. And now suddenly I have to pay this IRMA charge. And, you know, um, there's really no way around it. And it sneaks up on you. Um, we, I was talking about this another time and a person asked, well, can't you appeal this? There are IRMA appeals for, for life events. And the life events are, you know, you, you, um, you, 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 you retired or you lost your job or something like that. You can, and that's triggering IRMA. Say you have income from two years ago that um, you were when you were working, but you're not working anymore. And now suddenly they're, they're assessing you this IRMA charge. You can go and uh, file an appeal and you, you may have some luck with that appeal. But when you're talking about Roth conversions, and I am not being negative about Roth conversions, I think if you've watched any of my videos or spent any time with me, you know that I'm a fan and it's one of my favorite uh, strategies for tax efficient planning. But the, uh, administration will not let you, um, they, they will not accept I've stopped doing Roth conversions as part of the appeal. So when you embark on this Roth conversion strategy, you have to take IRMA into consideration. Now, what makes planning with IRMA difficult is what I'm going to point out to you here. So I want you to, let me just do another color. We'll use red. So this reads, 2024 IRMA monthly surcharges for Medicare Part B and D based on 2022 modified adjusted gross income. So we don't really know what the 2026 IRMA brackets are going to be, but it's going to be based on 2024 modified adjusted gross income. So let that sink in for a minute. We have to kind of playing in the dark a little bit. We can make assumptions. We can say, well, we're going to assume it's going to grow at 3%. Well, what if it grows at 4? Because this is based on an inflation factor. But what if it grows at 4? Or what if it grows at 2? If it grows at 2 and we're managing our Roth conversions, not just for how much we push up into the tax table, 
So the tax you pay, but also we're managing on these IRMA tables, these IRMA brackets. Well, maybe we missed an opportunity to convert more money because we were assuming it was going to grow at 3%, but it only grew at 2%. When I'm talking about the growth, I'm talking about the growth of the IRMA brackets. So, and maybe, maybe um, IRMA grows at 5% because inflation is still out of control and we've missed a big opportunity. Or maybe we assumed that Irma was going to grow at 3% and it only grew at 2%. And now we've, we've pushed somebody, here's your new cliff. You know, we've pushed somebody off of that cliff, right? That's no good. We don't want that. Oh, you missed my little fun drawing. I just did a fun drawing of somebody falling off the cliff there. So here's the Irma cliff. You want to be, you want to be careful about that. But if, if we, if we make these assumptions on, on what Irma is going to grow and we're wrong on these assumptions. It, it can be, it is difficult folks. It's really difficult to plan for this Irma. We had to be very conservative in our planning because we talked about it, but this two year look back, here's the definition. You can look it up on this chart for Irma purposes. It's clear that for Irma purposes, modified adjusted gross income. You can read that, read along with me is defined as adjusted gross income plus tax-exempt interest and untaxed foreign income. Medicare uses modified adjusted gross income reported on the federal tax return from two years ago. For example, to determine whether someone will pay higher premiums for 2024, Medicare uses 2022 modified adjusted gross income. Similarly, the tax return filed for 2024 will be used to calculate IRMA surcharges for the year 2026. So that's what I just talked about. So the... That's what makes this planning difficult. But listen, we work it out. We have a process for it. I'm just bringing it to your attention. Uh, this talks, let's continue reading on this chart because it's helpful. The RMD effect address uh, required minimum distributions. This is, these charts are made for us, for planners and uh, folks in the group. I just share them with you. But the uh, ad, with, with Ed's blessing, by the way, uh, address required minimum distribution requirements well in advance of the required beginning date plan ahead make sure that we're having this discussion because it does sneak up on you this uh, just over over and over again i hear people say oh, i just i wasn't considering that i got caught up in being in the top of the 24 percent bracket and suddenly i've hit this irma cliff and now i'm paying more than i expected and paying more than you expect for something like irma when it's coming right out of your uh, your social security check, or you have to write a check to the back to the government for hundreds of dollars a month. You know, that could, that can really put a kink in your plans for retirement. You know, the travel you want to do, the funds you want to, the, the fun you want to have, the things you want to do or, or the things you must do, you must pay for. So explaining how RMDs are included in income for Medicare part B and D costs two years down the road. RMDs are not required from Roth IRAs during the Roth IRA owner's lifetime. So don't forget to include uh, that this includes older beneficiaries who are also subject to RMDs on IRAs they in have inherited. Boy, that's a great point. I've been having so many conversations with clients who are and, and folks who attend classes and things like that who are not considering this about inherited IRA school. People will say, I have this, I, I have this aggressive strategy for transferring my, my traditional IRAs to Roth IRAs. And then I ask a question, um, are your parents still alive? Well, yeah, my father's still alive or my mother's still alive. Or, you know, maybe they're both gone or whatever. And I say, do you have any, um, there are some, que there are some issues if they're still alive and there's some issues, um, you know, around helping them fund things. But then there's also issues around inheritance because if you have a great plan to transfer, you know, uh, a million, your, your IRAs, you know, here are our buckets, taxable, tax deferred and tax free. Or tax advantaged. Uh, if you've got a great plan to convert your funds over the years and get to your mathematically ideal amount in your in your IRA bucket, and you can you know we can spend a lot of time talking about that. And suddenly you inherit five hundred thousand dollars in an inherited IRA that's going to sit in this tax deferred bucket. Well, folks, you can't convert that. You can't convert that. So now you've done all this work, and to reduce or eliminate uh, RMDs, and now. What happens when you inherit a $500,000 inherited IRA? Well, a lot of times, most times, almost all the time, actually, you've got to take RMDs at some point. You might be able to delay it until the end of 10 years. It all depends, but there is there are RMDs required, uh, even if it's one big RMD at the end of 10 years. But 
that's a big deal, and you cannot convert an inherited IRA to a Roth IRA. So that is, uh, that's an important planning point. So what do you do about that? It's, it's a little off topic, but you talk to your parents. It may, I had a discussion with a client who's very similar situation. I said, well, why don't we talk to your father about converting that money from the traditional IRA to a Roth IRA? It's, it, it will likely benefit him, but it will certainly benefit you. And if he's in a lower tax bracket than you are, then it can certainly make sense. So that was a successful conversation. And it's going to save that person a lot of potential money uh, in the future. So what do we do? What helps with IRMA? What helps avoid IRMA? Well, obviously, any tax-free or tax advantage withdrawals or income. And where do tax-free or tax advantage withdrawals or income come from? Well, they come from anything called Roth. Qualified distribution from a Roth IRA, Roth 401k, Roth 403b, now Roth set plans, Roth uh, simple plans. Anything Roth qualified distributions, I say that because you have to, you know, there are some requirements. You have to have it more than five years. You have to hold, the, you know, the earnings in a Roth IRA more than five years, and you've got to be over 59 and a half um, in most cases. But anything, any distribution out of there is tax free. Qualified charitable, well, let me come back to that. HSAs, health savings accounts. So if they're used for qualified medical expenses, Tax-free, not going to affect your modified adjusted gross income. Properly structured cash value of life insurance. Uh, you know, you've got to be careful with this, of course, but prop the withdrawals for, um, the, you know, my friend David McKnight calls these life insurance retirement plans. Withdrawals from life insurance retirement plans don't add into the modified adjusted gross income calculation, so they help you avoid this IRMA surcharge. QCDs. Qualified charitable distributions, qualified charitable distributions. This has become very, very popular. You identify an amount. If you're charitably inclined, you identify an amount that you want to move every year to a charity. You've got to be older than 70 and a half years old. Yes, 70 and a half still exists in the tax code. You have to be older than 70 and a half years old. And you can send that money directly to the charity it can satisfy your required minimum distribution up to over $100,000 now per individual. You can do that every year. It's adjusted for inflation now, so it's a little bit over $100,000 per individual. You send that right to the charity. That can satisfy your RMD, and it, you do not pay tax on that. Doesn't even doesn't even exist on your tax return. Doesn't trigger modified adjusted gross income. So they're really the four things that are going to help you avoid IRMA. But the big thing, the big thing, and this should be on top, but we'll put it here, is planning. Planning. Be ahead of it the best you can. And if you're caught in it, have a plan for coming out of it. And understand the benefit. You know, maybe of something like Roth conversion, something like funding, you know, your HSA or doing QCDs and, and paying attention to the details of it. Uh, don't let it sneak up on you. Do your planning. Don't let it sneak up on, on you. And it's, if it's already snuck up on you, take the steps to help clean it up because you can do it. Again, these are critical items. Uh, and maybe if you knew that knew differently, something differently in the past, um, you would have uh, done things differently, but you know it now. And uh, you can make changes. So let's just look. There's a second page to this chart, and it talks about income reduction strategies. Let's just make sure we hit them all. We hit. We talked about Roth conversions. We talked about health savings accounts, HSAs. We talked about qualified charitable distributions. Uh, other strategies, timing investment gains and other income by accelerating them onto a tax return for a year before IRMA calculation. So that's a that's a great point. So cal we, you know, anytime that you're looking, sorry, I'll move this up. That's timing investment gains and other income by accelerating them onto a tax return for a year before IRMA calculations occur or deferring them to a year when income is expected to be lower and then be offsetting losses. Well, folks, this is this is really all planning and execution. So. You can have great plans, but without good execution, you know, the plan isn't very effective. So planning and execution is very, very important. So when we look at liquidating positions for a client or, or transferring accounts or changing, changing investments, we're always paying attention to things like capital gains and things like capital gains and, and other tax triggers, right? Capital gains, interest, dividends, things like that. Other tax triggers have an effect on a lot of things, tax credits, Roth conversions, things like that. 
But the uh, it also has an effect, of course, on IRMA because it's based on that modified adjusted gross income. Look at spending funds from tax-free sources, this, this says. We talked about that. We didn't talk about this using a home equity conversion mortgage. So like a home, uh, a, a, um, uh, a reverse mortgage that's, they become very, very popular, even for the wealthy individuals. It's not just about your back is to the wall and Hey, you need to leverage the, the equity you have in your house. If you set up a home equity reverse mortgage line of credit, you can access that in years where you may need some funds, but if you take something from another account, that's going to cause an increase to your modified adjusted gross income. It's going to treat uh, trigger things like Irma. And maybe you're already in an, in an Irma bracket that's sustainable, but what if you need an extra $50,000 for something and you say, geez, all I have is my IRA. If I take another $50,000 that I need out of my IRA, I am jumping off that Irma cliff to that next bracket. Well, it may be better to use something like a home equity line of credit or a home equity reverse mortgage line of credit, something like that. And we can help you figure those things out. And then when income falls uh, is the next section. So these are all good points. Again, you can download this form. So let's go back and make sure we hit all of our points in this financial 15, talking about the income related monthly adjustment amount, what we call IRMA, what is known as IRMA. Remember, everybody knows you've got an Uncle Sam, but few realize until it's too late that you have an Aunt Irma. And we talked about what is Irma, income related monthly adjustment amount. Why Irma? Why does this thing exist? <laughs> what causes Irma? Modified adjusted, it's based on modified adjusted gross income. RMDs, required minimum distributions, is one of the biggest causes of Irma. Roth conversions, while you're doing them, if you're if you're receiving Medicare benefits, you will uh, potentially trigger Irma costs. Um, you've got to do that calculation to see if there's a benefit to you. Just like you should be looking at what's the future benefit of this tax planning I'm doing. You got to say, okay, what's it look like if I'm paying more Irma now, but I'm reducing or eliminating it later? Is there a savings? Is there is there a financial benefit to me? You should be looking at that. Capital gains, interest, dividends, all those things add to that Irma modified adjusted gross income and, and the triggers on Irma. What helps to avoid Irma tax free or tax advantage withdrawals or income from Roth IRAs, qualified charitable distributions, health savings accounts, properly properly structured cash value life insurance, and yes, even something like a home equity line of credit or a home equity or reverse mortgage line of credit. And we want to properly plan. We want to properly plan and properly execute um, to make sure that these things aren't sneaking up on us. And if they've already snuck up on you, that you have a plan to unwind it. All right, folks, that's the Financial 15 for this week. I hope that was helpful. Um, you can reach out to us with questions you have at questions at outerboroughwealth.com. That's questions at outerboroughwealth.com. If you'd like to schedule time with me to talk about a strategy like this or tax-efficient strategy for you, you can reach out to us at questions at outerboroughwealth.com, questions at outerboroughwealth.com. You can download that information I spoke about at outerboroughwealth.com, and you can also find other videos that we have talked about and we've broadcasted for you at outerboroughwealth.com for now. We are really, really close to the member only and client only website. So within the next 60 to 90 days, the uh, this is going to be a completely different website where these videos are found no longer on YouTube and um, the uh, on our website. There'll be in a course format. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be very exciting. You're going to be, be able to go in and receive certifications and, and kind of a report card for different courses. It's I've been working on this for a long time now and it's finally coming together and I'm, I'm excited for uh, all you. So um, I hope that was helpful and I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, on our next webinar and uh, take care. Have a great week.